the sign. They might not be positioned at a height that somebody in a wheelchair can treat. They might not be positioned, uh, they might not have text that's sufficiently large or high contrast so that people with visual impairments can see it. All these issues need to be addressed and need to be addressed consistently so that people have the confidence to know that what they want to get, they will get wherever they find it. And the interviews throughout, this is a slide with a number of uh, speech bubbles that pick up some of the messages that people gave us when we spoke with them and when we had workshops. And a lot of appetite. I mean, I've been overwhelmed with the enthusiasm that we've received for this project from all the people that we've engaged with. And I think the turnout tonight just, just reinforces that feeling. Um, but some of the comments, the system should consider all modes of transportation. It's not just about walking, it's about making movement easier for people regardless of how they travel. Uh, it needs to enhance city identity and that's building on the things that we already have in Toronto as a place. Um, it should embrace technology. New technology is there, but new technology is not the only means of communicating information. But it's a very accessible and mobile means that can help all sorts of different people. So you can have speech directions for walking, for example, for visually impaired uh, through a mobile phone. And the data that we'll be developing that I'll tell you about will support those types of applications. The outcomes of the workshop gave us some, some important uh, principles that we needed to follow up on as we developed the design themes for the project. And those principles are listed on the slide of accessibility. Modal transition, what happens when you come out of a, a subway station? How do you get from that subway station to where you want to get to? When there's nothing outside the station to tell you, for example. Um, what happens when you go from a park to a public highway? Um, there might be a sign at the park, but there's unlikely to be anything that tells you how to get from that park to the bus stop or to the university, for example, in Morningside, where we, where we were doing one of our surveys. Um, a consistent information hierarchy so that people understand the levels of information and the, the people delivering the system can give people inf the information they need where and when they need it consistently. That it's connected and that importantly in Toronto where there are very jurisdictions that partnerships are encouraged and embraced because to deliver a system citywide requires really very broad partnership working. It's not something one agency themselves can credibly deliver. And our best practice review, this slide shows nine pictures of different wayfinding schemes from um, the top left we have the City of London, which is a very, very high quality, very expensive scheme within the square mile of the City of London. And this has large maps and it has um, interpretive information about historical buildings and it has directions to various places of interest around the city. Um, Philadelphia we have next, which has a, a little bit like some of the BIAs here, it has colour-coded districts in the city, but they're joined up in Philadelphia and it helps you to navigate between them all. Um, Barcelona on the top right, where they've got an interesting system that's very sympathetic to the Gothic Quarter and the old traditional centre. Um, we've got a couple of other projects uh, in London, in Islington, and there's New York, and interestingly New York have recently confirmed significant federal funding for a, a city-wide wayfinding project of this nature across the five boroughs. Um, other important uh, benchmark projects we looked at were Legible London, which again is um, very comparable with the objectives of this project, which is a city-wide wayfinding project delivered in partnership with London's 32 boroughs. Each of these schemes have different objectives and each of these schemes have different aims. London was looking to reduce very short trips on the uh, underground network to save billions of pounds being invested in, in underground uh, capacity enhancements, for, for example. So what are, we, what are we going to do? I think this is the kind of meat of that, I guess. The strategy is driven around five themes that are shown on the slide. We have consistency, inclusivity, sustainability, transition, and being local. I'll just shortly, just, just briefly explain what these are. Many of the things I've said already, consistency is consistency of present content, making sure all the systems are the same, have the same information in them, regardless of presentation, which means third parties can use the information on their wayfinding systems 
but that they'll speak in the same language so that people understand what they're being told. Um, and I'll talk about the detail of that, the, the four different themes, hierarchy, conventions, positioning, structures, uh, the next slide. Inclusivity, the, the system needs to cater for users of all types and all needs. Um, both for physical access, for contrast, um, more broad accessibility requirements, and also think about technology. Technology, both in terms of new media for people who like using mobile phones to navigate, but also for people who, who need that as part of their day-to-day -day life. Sustainability is a very important consideration because you can't implement a product and not maintain it, but you also need to improve the, both the social and economic sustainability of cities. Um, so we'll consider the full life cycle costing, what's required to maintain these products, not just the capital cost of implementation. It's also important that they're extendable in the future, so they're resilient to change. Because